Alrighty, now, this is going to be a controversial one. So, this is the V8, the new variant that I've already got an unboxing for here. Now, to save a lot of people time, um, this channel, a lot of people here are vacuum collectors, so this tends to get a little bit more in-depth and a little bit more rambly. If you're a regular consumer, basic breakdown of the title that you see is this. This Dyson is definitely the best Dyson, best cordless Dyson. It is, I think, the worst value, however, in the cordless Dyson lineup. And there are a few big reasons for that. Most of them are what I think could have been excused as the V8 was older, but now that it's gotten an update, and I use that very loosely with what they've changed, I don't think this is really ever worth the, I believe it's $599 that they ask for this absolute model, especially when you can get into the V10 series machines and up, and V11s that have more power, longer runtime, more customizability with the floor head that they come with. This machine just does not have the value that it should at the price point that it regularly sells at. Now, if you catch it on sale or you buy one refurbished through Dyson's eBay store or online store, that's another matter entirely. These are great value for money, I think, at about the $279 that I paid for the machine. But at $599, there are just too many issues with these. For really heavy-duty or deep-cleaning pickups, Dyson is still trying to build these cordless machines as replacements for a full-size vacuum, more so in the V10 and Up series, but most people don't understand any nuance in that, so they think cordless will replace corded no matter what. You just don't have enough runtime. Uh, stock batteries on these machines will run, I think it's about eight minutes on max mode with a powered accessory attached. It's just not enough power and not enough runtime for what you should get on max for that short of a period. Dyson themselves say that using the max mode excessively will put additional strain on the battery and reduce battery life, which is disgraceful. In my experience, these already have terrible stock battery lifespans. We've seen a lot of customers about a year to two years having to replace these stock batteries, and they're not cheap if you go with a genuine Dyson battery. It can be near or over $100, depending on the model and the time that you buy. The accessories on this machine are also a disappointment, I find. So you get included with this absolute model hair screw tool, which honestly, this is probably the best miniature power nozzle I've come across in modern times. You get the new power nozzle with the hair removal veins inside. Good nozzle. Hair actually is detangled. It's one of the few that works, unlike Shark System, for example. Big problem that I have is this does not have the adjustable gates that the higher-end cordless machines do, and I think that's a really big miss on this machine. It gives you another layer of adjustability that I think you should have. You get these two standard tools, combination dusting and upholstery tool and crevice tool. I wish they still had the dusting brush crevice tool combo like they used to back in the day on some machines. I find that to be a much more usable dusting brush in a lot of scenarios. They also don't give you this holder. I bought that separately as a generic piece, and honestly, for a $600 machine, I really think that needs to be included. Other big gripe is up here. The fact that they still have not given this a medium power mode, I feel like for a lot of tasks, a medium would be a great balance in between the max mode, which gives pathetic runtime on the stock battery, and the normal mode, which gives not the greatest suction or airflow. I find the crevice tool to be almost useless on that normal setting with the vents it has included. So that is one of the other things that really annoys me is the lack of any updates for power setting customizability. And one example I'll give on slightly more plush carpet than this, the carpeting that I did the unboxing video on, to deep clean that carpet properly, if you're picking up something like 
cat litter, sand, anything like that that's been a little bit more embedded, you need to have this machine on max mode. If you turn this machine on max mode, you can't push the nozzle. It stops and the motor slash, I don't really want to say belt, these guys don't have a belt, but the protection system in the power nozzle shuts it off automatically. If you had the adjustable vents that you do in the higher end V-series machines, that would be completely rectified with no issue. So those are really my main gripes with the main packaging. The fluffy floor tool is another one that actually I dislike the more and more I use. Now, my big problem with this is this is the first generation fluffy tool. This tool has been replaced and it actually was effectively discontinued because it was not coming with most models of Dyson for quite a while before they seemingly reintroduced it after coming out with the second generation laser fluffy. And uh, the thing that bothers me is, again, this is a $599 machine at its MSRP. There's no reason for Dyson to be including this older tool or still making this older tool. All of these machines for the price that they cost should have, in my opinion, the laser fluffy. It's a great marketing feature. You save some money just by the simple fact that you don't have to produce two completely different nozzles for the models. And you also save inventory space and all things like that. So it really just does not make sense to me um, overall in packing this tool. Now, my big gripe with it performance-wise is this. These tools, pretty much ever since they came out, have been lauded as some of the best performing hard floor tools you can find. I'm really not that impressed with it on that front. It cleans up fine dust and things like that very well from hard floors and hair without really tangling. The big problem that I see, and part of this relates to the architecture and power of the V8, one of the things that these are designed to be good at is pick up from the very front. So you've got an open front nozzle here, and this does two things really. It allows you with this big soft roller to pick up large debris. So if you've got kids, you've got Cheerios and things like that scattered everywhere, this is gonna be able to pick it up and scoop it in where a regular nozzle would just push. It should also, in theory, be better at picking up debris going forward. So let's say you have things under the toe kick in your kitchen and you approach that straight on. It should be better picking that up versus a, a kind of regular style nozzle that may push or not be able to suck that debris in. My first experience with this nozzle with this V8 was I grabbed it. There's a section actually right there in the kitchen where the door to the laundry room area and the entryway of the house swings up against the fridge. That area, pet hair, human hair, dust tends to collect in between that door and the fridge. Some of it gets blown slightly under. The big problem that I had is this machine on low power mode or regular power or extended runtime, depending on what Dyson calls it at the time that they feel like, would not pick that hair up. There was not enough suction or airflow movement coming through this nozzle or direct contact with the front of this nozzle to actually be able to pull that in. If I switch to high power mode, no problem, it works. So that is one big miss because if you have to turn this on to high power mode to get dirt and debris out of certain areas, you're significantly reducing your run time. I didn't find it pick it up that well when it comes to my cat litter, which over the years I found the cat litter that we use tends to be one of the more difficult types to pick up. They're very fine granules and they tend to be very heavy for how small they are. This tends to leave more behind than even on high power than I would ever assume a tool like this would. I can actually run over the same space more easily on low power with an auric magnesium and generally have better pickup results other than some awkward areas under the toe kick where this more flexible swivel neck makes it easier to get contact overall. So 
those are my big gripes on this, and that's why I do not think that this machine is really worth the money. Again, if you can get it on sale, that's great. That is probably your best bet for something like this. These are generally going to be a little bit more durable than most of the competition, especially kind of the fly-by-night Amazon brands that generally kind of sit in that 100 to $300 price range. But you're probably going to have battery issues with it, especially if you need to use high power. And again, I think it just lacks some of the customizability and the finesse. I also think the tools are lacking. Obviously, as I stated, I'm really not a fan of this fluffy tool. Would love to see what the laser fluffy is like and if it's improved overall. But I think for this machine's price and it being the top of the range in the V8, you should get a better dusting brush. I bought an adapter and bought the very old Dyson soft dusting brush that they do not make a variant of for these guys. It was only for the uprights. Much better dusting brush. You still, I think, need, if you really want to get any and everywhere with one of these guys, probably at least the low reach tool or the over the top tool, I believe they call it. A lot of things that I just think should be included at the price point that this machine retails for. Otherwise, you end up spending so much money buying the kit on top of the machine that I think it's a bit ridiculous. Now, on to kind of the rest of the review of this machine. There is one thing that I truly think makes this worth it besides getting it at the 279 price point. There have finally been companies that actually released a battery adapter now, they've had battery adapters for a while for a lot of different power tool brands. They have not had one for Ryobi, other than one company that was charging outrageous prices for 3D printed ones, and it just really wasn't worth it at that point to me. A lot more have come out, and they're easily available. So, I picked one of those up. Now, to give you a little bit of an idea, this machine, I could barely make it through my daily vacuuming in the house. And when I say daily vacuuming, I don't mean anything extraneous. I mean literally vacuuming the floors with the fluffy roller on the hard floor and the regular kind of motor drive power nozzle on carpeting. And that was it. No dusting, no detail cleaning, no nothing else. Barely makes it through on regular power mode. High power mode, <laughs> I can't really get anywhere with that. I try not to even turn it on on the stock battery. On this Ryobi battery, this is at the time that I was buying these, these were the largest that had come out. I believe they have up to a 12 amp hour now, but this is a 9 amp hour Ryobi 1 plus 18 volt battery. That I can run the entire house and a little bit more on high power mode and that's what makes this worth it overall for me because I have multiple of these nine amp hour batteries I have even more six and four amp hour I can pretty much keep this thing running indefinitely with those battery systems so that makes it very easy for me to do any and everything I do I will say though I do still think this machine provides very dubious value over something like a simple lightweight machine. My general preference is still towards the Auric Magnesium that I have that was the daily cleaner before this. Really the thing that gets me is swapping between the fluffy tool and the normal motorhead tool going between hard floor areas and hard floor areas that have rugs and things like that. With the Auric it's a flick of a switch. With this it's swapping a whole tool out. Do you have to? No, but if you've got the fluffy tool, I feel like you may as well use it, and that's really where it comes in for me. Having the tools is nice, but again, it comes into a stop, move things around, which can get annoying, especially with something like this, because it doesn't stand up on its own. It's not like a Mila Triflex. You need to lay it down or try and hold it in one hand while you're swapping attachments in and out with the other, and... The machine has relatively good balance in the arm, still better than the V10 Plus machines with one of these large batteries on. But if you're trying to hold it and swap tools in and out, that's where it gets a little bit more dicey on that front. So 
great option for runtime, not always the best for overall convenience on one of these things. But I think that's most of my rambling, so I'm going to grab this. We will go for a quick little run around here. I'm not going to really demo this too much because there are a bunch of other places and people that have. Performance on max mode, honestly, is acceptable. One thing I will say I am disappointed in the motorhead on these guys. I think it's mainly due to the brushes, but if you have really matted areas of carpet, especially if it is a denser, low to medium pile carpeting, it's not really going to do anything to lift it up. If you have a rug, like an entryway mat that has kind of different levels to it, like a lot due to trap dirt. It's not really going to get everything out of those lower areas and valleys in those rugs. So there are definitely things that these do not do too well. If you've got a home that's mainly hard floors with a couple rugs that are low pile here and there, it'll probably serve you fine as a main vacuum. If there's anything else, you're probably better off suited with a corded machine uh, in some way, shape, or form. So let's go with this. I'm going to swap this out real quick for the fluffy head, if I can actually do this one-handed. There we go. And there. So there is that. Once again, apologies for the shaky camera work, but unfortunately, not working with my preferred camera, working with an iPhone now and no tripod for this to mount to. All right, so big thing with this machine, outside of what we've already talked about, I will say this was completely empty. I have been impressed with the overall pickup performance in terms of carpeting. Haven't been too impressed with the carpet grooming. The motor head with these hair removal veins, like I said earlier, this is really one of the best anti-hair tangle that I have seen. You still have to be careful because hair definitely will still build up under these end caps and under the motor drive shaft. So... You do need to take that out and clean it still every once in a while just to prevent that buildup from causing damage. Now, this little filter update, I'm really not sure how I feel about it because I have a feeling a lot of these are going to get broken off. It's a little bit easier to remove than the one with just the stem in the center. I'm assuming this little window is probably... So people will actually realize that these are filthy because I've seen a lot of people who have these completely clogged up and they think something's wrong with the machine because it pulses on and off. But they've just never washed it properly and the whole thing needs to be disassembled to take out normally two, three inches thick worth of dust and pet hair that's all built up. So 
We'll see what the story is with these guys in the long run. I still don't like these Dyson washable filters, much like I do not like Sharks washable filters. I don't think, especially for the price point of these machines, they do a well enough job at being a pre-motor filter. I would actually prefer a advanced cyclone system like this backed by a pleated pre-motor filter, kind of a halfway combination between what you see in Amila Triflex and this machine. Washable HEPA filter on the back. This is sealed very well. The HEPA does stay pretty clean, especially when these are early on new. One thing I really dislike is if you have this machine on the max setting, it blows an insane amount of airflow out of this, and I would argue that these vents are very poorly designed in where they point. They kind of end up coming out and almost towards the user, so if you're trying to use this to dust or do anything up close to the dirt you're working with, there's a good chance these exhaust ports are going to blow things around. It's a little bit less of an issue on the low power setting just because it doesn't move near as much airflow, but it still can be very obnoxious depending on what you're doing. Now, that also brings me to another thing with max mode, especially with using these batteries that I am. I really don't know how long this machine is actually going to last. Like I said earlier, Dyson's own site states that if you use max mode frequently, it can lead to degradation of the battery. So they are clearly not intending for you to use max mode often, much less every time you run this machine for an extended period of time. And I will say this motor running on max mode for a long time can get pretty warm. So I really wonder if this machine is actually going to make it through the two-year warranty period that these come with, which is also pathetically short for how expensive this machine retails for. I think that's a little bit disgraceful, but I really don't foresee one of these machines having the longest lifespan with whatever tolerances Dyson engineered for on these motors to be running at max. I'm assuming they probably intended for them to run about 5% of their life on max or something along those lines with the short run times that the battery provides on max. So we'll see what happens with that. Other thing that I'm not too crazy about, I actually prefer, and this is probably gonna be a little bit controversial as well, I prefer the older style V6 bin release rather than this one. And there are a couple big reasons for that. So one thing that I noticed almost immediately when I got this home, hair removal veins work brilliantly on that nozzle. And if you're somebody buying this machine for that reason, you probably have people or pets with long hair in your home. Now the problem is, almost all of that ends up wrapped around the shroud in the bin. Now, theoretically, when you pull this guy open and you release everything, here's what we just picked up. The little rubber ring inside there that acts as both a seal and kind of a squeegee cleaner should push any debris off the shroud and into the garbage. Well, guess what? It doesn't. If you noticed earlier in the video, there was actually hair hanging out of this that had gotten caught in that didn't come out. And you can see a few strands around the top here. So you often have to kind of shimmy that up and down a couple of times. These also have a really bad habit of building up a lot of dust and dirt and debris in the cyclones over time. So those will need to be cleaned. And much against Dyson's normal protestations, a bottom empty bin does not eliminate a dust cloud. And these little things get all covered all up in here around the battery, all up against here with dust. So you're going to be fighting constant dust storms every single time you empty this, unless you're picking up something mainly like pet hair that can kind of tangle in that dust and trap it. Not Great overall. I really thought going into this, I've wanted some kind of convenient cordless machine like this for a long time, and I went back and forth between something like this or something like a Mila Triflex or something like the 
V15 or Gen 5 Detect. V15 and Gen 5 Detect are just too expensive, in my opinion, for what they are. They're always going to be not as durable as they should be due to their batteries and just the way that these nozzles are constructed. I just don't think these will ever be high quality enough to be a full-size vacuum replacement like Dyson is trying to build, especially the larger versions of these. The trigger is another thing on this that I really don't like. They make trigger locks, but I mean, are you seriously telling me that when they were updating this, they couldn't have gone like the V6 models that had HEPA where the max button was back here and have it set up exactly like the Gen 5 Detect where there's a button that's here. In the V6 HEPAs, it was a fake button in the filter casing that pressed a little micro switch in here. I would actually prefer that even to the slide switch up here for suction adjustment controls, but for whatever reason, something that you basically need to use two hands for if you're already using the machine is what they have decided to stick with since the V7. So I think there are some design choices in these machines that are very much a step back from what should have been, what came on the V7 or the V6 rather machines. So I have very mixed feelings about this. Again, bottom line is on sale, 279 sure, it's good enough. You're probably going to want to get additional accessories to round out your cleaning arsenal, depending on what kind of cleaning you want to do with it, how detailed you want to get. And you may just want to buy a battery adapter to get away from the really overpriced and very underpowered and under lifespan, if you would like to put it that way, batteries that you get from Dyson themselves, whether you have, I mean, they make adapters for basically everything. Ryobi... Milwaukee and DeWalt are the three big ones. I'm pretty sure I've seen Makita system, 18-volt uh, adapters, and that really covers most people's bases. So do with that what you will. But uh, I think a lot of people who look at a machine like this should really consider how much do you value the attachments you're going to use on this thing. At the end of the day, I think I get more convenience out of my auric magnesium because no, it doesn't have attachments, but I do have the ability to go from hard floors to rugs and carpets with just a flick of one switch, not changing any tools out. It does most of the same things this will. And at the end of the day, I don't have to worry about cleaning a filter. I don't have to worry about how dirty the cyclones are getting. And I just put it back in the closet when I'm done because I don't have to think about plugging it in. Slightly less of a concern with this. But I also don't have to worry about anything bagless related because with that auric magnesium, it is just simply toss it back in the closet until the bag is completely full, pull it out, toss it out, put a new one in, and you're done. And I do miss that overall bagged simplicity though this does work very nicely for what it is. So I think a lot of people have to kind of draw that line of what they think is really going to fit them best. For most people, they'll just go with the idea of convenience of cordless, I think, on these, and the idea of the convenience of not having to buy bags. So those are my thoughts on this guy overall. Like I said, best Dyson handheld out there very possibly the worst value though at its retail price at 599 if you're not getting one of these on sale probably better off with a triflex that has better runtime on high power about 17 minutes has hot swappable batteries has a battery you can charge outside of the machine has a better pre-motor filter stands up on its own blah 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 the, the way most people use these i think and the way most of my customers use them is they use them basically like a modern day cordless electric broom and i think there are different and better options out there than this if you're really going to use the attachment cleaning if you're going to take it out and use your car things like that then that's probably going to steer you more in this direction and these are infinitely more usable than something like a v10 and up for attachment cleaning so that's going to be really kind of one of the biggest impacts with these. But if you have any other questions or any comments, feel free to leave them down below and I can try and address them as best as possible. But yeah, that's about everything for today.